action. Wow. Go ahead, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> no, so yeah, this is we didn't do a, a formal introduction in the beginning. At least I don't think so. But this is episode. I feel like we did. But nah, I, I, you know I, what? Let it. Let yeah. it out. Um. Yeah. This is episode twenty-three of the Bloody Roots podcast. Uh, we have a special, very special guest. Um. One of our first. Well, we've had family members, but um, like an older family member, an uncle, my padrino. Uh, what what do you want to be referred to as name wise? Uh, the youngest, better looking brother of the Godinas. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's the be- the best looking and like youngest that. brother cool. of uh, <laughs> the Godinas family, my dad's side of the family. Uh, yeah, uh, my padrino means a lot to me and. Uh, uh, growing up, uh, he was very supportive and always uh, <coughs> trying to do stuff with us as kids. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not uh, negating anything that my aunt and my other uncles, everybody has been super nice and amazing. Um, and we share very fond memories with the family growing up, uh, especially me and my brother as kids. We, yeah, it was pretty interesting because we were the first ones, uh, the first nephews. So we got to... Uh, I think we were spoiled in the fact that we had so many experiences with all of you guys um, and kind of growing up with the uh, like with like my aunt and my uncle Lewis. And yeah, with them, it's like it was almost like we were their brothers, you know, like their little brothers. <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool. Sure, that's yeah. Better. So it was it's interesting. Yeah. The way we grew up, like and being with my grandparents a lot, it was, it, we had a lot of great uh Great yeah, memories your dad, was, your dad was so young when he had you, and uh, Louis and Lila are, you know, th- you know, they were young. So they're they, teenagers, they were almost yeah. Like, they were almost like your older brother and sister and brother. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. We used to go bother Luis when he was all working, <laughs> out, working out upstairs. we go bother him. He's probably like, man, these fucking kids, man. <laughs> like at Eli, me, my little brother, we go upstairs, and Luis is all working out and shit. Oh, getting man. that pump. <laughs> <laughs> Was it is it true that he was a he was a model for Univision or something like that? Well, he, he came out on a thong or something. He did like a that? spread. He did a thing and, and a spread. No, like <laughs> like uh, <laughs> what the <laughs> spread him? <no. laughs> By spread, I mean I like a. <laughs> he wore a thong <laughs> and he spread yeah, those cheeks. <laughs> uh, hey, is it his name on uh, PS Brazilian Wax? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm on the PlayStation. Oh god. <laughs> No, he did a he did a thing on Univision. Like they showed him like on Univision when he was doing his modeling. He did like um, it was uh, like a swimwear thing where he was. Yeah, he was featured. Yeah, yeah he, he was, was featured. Yeah, he and was it was the model on the swimsuit swimsuit uh, <laughs> feature that they had on Univision before the That's summer. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So how do you feel seeing your little brother right there showing his thing line? <laughs> you know, <laughs> looking Proud all muscular. Yeah. Proud of Hell my yeah. Words, yeah, was, because yeah. <laughs> it's not easy to, you know, to again. It's about being dedicated to achieve that level of, you know, physique. It takes dedication. You know, yeah. you gotta watch what you eat and you gotta work out. And no matter how hungover you are or how you <laughs> don't wanna go to the gym, you choose to do that. So of course I'm proud of them. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Hell yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> right, I, so, I always get that story. That's <laughs> crazy. You know. All right. Thank you for having me. My name is uh, Jose Antonio Godinez, Godinez, Godinez Contreras. Hell yeah. And, uh, <laughs> You're purebred, man. <laughs> some, you know, some people know, know me as Jose because that's my first name, being Catholics. You know, my, being, being Catholics and being the firstborn, my parents decided to yeah. name me Jose because, you know, because Catholics of their San, San Jose, they had no intention of calling me Jose because they want my, dad, my dad's name is Antonio. They're going to call me Tony. They already knew that. So I didn't know my first name was Jose until I was in fifth grade because they always called me Tony. I, uh, I, in damn. School, I, used, for real? I used to write that. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, so then when I came, when I moved from San Diego here, you know, I, again, I was living by myself and just I was depressed. I hated it here. I came from beautiful San Diego and coming and came here, this ugly, gang banging, full school. Not that there were no children. And that was because you guys, you were in Pilsen, right? Well, or no, I came, that's when I came to live with, um, with his dad. Well, over, we went in to Rockwell and Rockwell. Yeah. And it, it was just brutal. So I, I'm like, man, I didn't like anybody at all. 
again, I, I went through a depression myself. Thank God I had your dad that was like, he's like like my brother to me. Was he cool or, or was he like, uh, not cool? You know what I mean? I cannot think of a bigger asshole. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Uh, you're like, I agree. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. No. <laughs> uh, my dad's cool. I don't know. I got, my all. dad always like, man, whenever Tony or Hugo or Luis hit up my dad, it's like he gets this little light in his eyes. That's he gets so happy, dude. Because <laughs> he, he's to me, he's like, he's like, like a, my brother. He took me under, to, you know, under his house, let me live there, and uh, he treated me like a brother. He put up with my shit when I was a teenager, and as difficult as my, he put up with me. He treated me like a brother and like a son so no, you couldn't have been that bad man you're like one of the nicest guys i know man. i don't know man <laughs> <laughs> he did tell me one story <laughs> I, i'm gonna put you on blast Tony. i'm sorry i love you dude uh he told me that one time which is man honestly pretty sad you know because you were so tired you had probably i think you had worked and then you were doing work and school so you yeah. were like tired as shit worked at mcdonald's yeah so and i heard mcdonald's is, is tough you know so I heard um, that you were like really tired and you slept in and you didn't go to school. So my dad was te dio una cagada, right? Because he's like, hey, man, like, what the hell, man? Why are you in school? Yep. Like, how do you feel about that? Like, at that moment, were you like a little irritated? Like, God, man, give me a break. Or like, do you look at that now? Like, man, like, I get, I get what he was trying to say or whatever, you know? At that moment, I was embarrassed. Okay. I was so embarrassed. That that uh, that I did that and that I let your your father down because he he believed in me. Yeah. Your father always believed in me. Always, always, and uh, so yeah, that that's how I feel about it. Immersed. What the hell, Tony? <laughs> well, yeah, no, just, he believed in me, and yeah. uh, he was here. He took a shot right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would too, man. Uh, I was embarrassed because, like I said, I feel like I let him down, and um, so you know, working at McDonald's, I was, li you know, li you know, living with your dad, and I, I, pair, I paid what I could. He was kind of okay. Yeah, you know, whatever you could, <laughs> you know, help me. That is good. Yeah. I, we, so we sp actually he didn't charge me rent, which was split the foot. He didn't charge me for anything. We split the food. That's all we did. And uh, then when your dad came in, same thing. You know, it's just, you know, we, we, we pay for the food. And uh, worked at McDonald's, after school, whatever else whatever I could get. And you had all these fucking rich, well, rich, relative, relatively considering, kids that went there, they lived with their parents, and they were picky about the hours. Oh, I don't want to work this weekend. I don't want to work that day. So I would take every fucking weekend. None of them wanted to close, cause to close, you get out like at two a.m. Damn. Holy crap. So guess who who had to close? I did, and I needed the money. You know that's what I would take. Well, I wanted to come over to school. No, you know they already have these kids that want to work. So if you want to work more hours, this is the hours you gotta take. So th that's what I did. So what that created is just it created kind of like a cycle where, you know, you're always sleeping. Yeah, eventually you're tired. And then eventually, some days you're not gonna make it to school. So, unfortunately, I had to miss a lot of uh, first periods. Started at 7:45, and the period that I missed the most at that time was U.S. history. But you know what grace I got in U.S. history and every single exam, ace. Hell yeah. Every single one of them. And you know what the fucking teacher gave me as a grade? He failed me. He gave me an F. So one day when we went to get our report cards, I knew what I had in my test. And I'm all proud, you know, oh, Lupe, we're going to go get the report card. Oh, okay, you know, so Lupe comes, you know, proud of me. Okay. Oh, so it was like the parent guardian or something? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Oh, shit, cool. So uh, I go and we go into his teacher. He's, oh, yay, hey, how you doing? Oh, yeah, good student, very smart. Let's hear his grade, an F. I'm like, God. I'm like, and I ask, why did you fail? Well, you didn't go to school. But I, I, I took every test. I did every quiz. I had A's. And, and I was showing your dad, yeah, but because they con they took attendance. attendance and they brought my grade to an F. Damn. So I ended up, you know, so then the next the next semester, I'm like, I mean, the, 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 the second quarter, I was there, you know, no matter how tired I was, I was there all the freaking time. But anyway, I say this because I remember what your dad said. He said, um, hey, you know, if you 
you do good and you don't you don't get any Fs. He didn't even ask for A's. He's like, <laughs> if you don't get any Fs, well, actually, it's because uh, that's the only F I had. Um, I'm going to take you to get some Chinese food because he knew I love <laughs> Chinese food. <laughs> so your dad did everything he could, meant every single thing. Every single thing he said, he meant, and it was always good and positive. So every day I thought about the Chinese dinner, yeah. and I'm and every and I just wanted to make him proud because he believed in me, and he, you know, genuine guy. Your dad is the most genuine, one of the most gen, the most genuine person that I know. You know, selfless like nobody else. I gotta say, I wish you would have told me for some Chinese food. <laughs> <laughs> Give you some incentive. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, if you get a C in this class. Yeah, man. He's like, you're going to Veneno, my son. You know, <laughs> Chapuzon, boy. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, my dad was cool. He was very fun. I got to have a lot of fun growing up. Oh, he was yeah. pretty cool. So I mean, he was doing like parent shit long bef like long before us, oh, yeah, man. He, he 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 grew us up, and he was he was good. Like, he uh, we were not um, yeah. We're definitely not 21. I wasn't even 18. And, you know, then when your when your brother came over, he was like 15 or 16. Oh, my dad, also. yeah. And uh, he used to take <clears throat> us to El Casino Tropical. And we would, you know, just try to hook up. <laughs> <laughs> didn't always work. Oh, okay. you, guys are, work. you guys are teenagers. Yeah, go over there. teenagers. <laughs> but, yeah, he would bring us. He would take us everywhere he went. That's so funny. Huh? He would take us everywhere he <clears throat> went. So yeah. you guys are dancing with older ladies probably, right? They were the only ones that would dance with us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That younger girl is like, no, no, I'm too good for you. Yeah. Oh, man. Hey, but you guys had that swag back then, man. You guys had that long... Uh, the long hair? Yeah, you guys were looking like uh, Memo Choas, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? You got the long curl, the long curls and shit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Hugo too, right? Your dad too, I think. My dad, yeah, did yeah. he have the long hair at the time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no not when we are living with your dad. Oh, no? That was, you guys uh, cut it off already? It, we had not grown it. That was once you got maybe into your later teens? Yeah. You, uh, I thought that was more like a California thing or something. Like when, when we when we lived with your dad, we had a <clears throat> new wave haircut. Okay, what's the new so wave? Like a it's like a mushroom kind of uh, hair, just long at the top and shorter on the back. Then oh, we okay, started okay. Letting, letting our hair grow, you know, shortly after that. Like after we moved out from your dad's house, that's when we started. Uh, For real, you're like, all right, we're going to be ourselves now, man. Because you went into the new stars. wave and rocker yeah. type era, right? Like right. the grunge. Was that type of at that time? Not even no? grunge, but yeah. Just, yeah, the rock. Spanish look, rock, yeah. Yeah. You're not a big fan of grunge, right? You told us last time you nah, didn't really like grunge. I'm not a grunge. big fan. Very few bands that I like. I think that's the worst <laughs> music time in history, music, <laughs> music wise, in the US. The well, I got a question for you then. Um, people are going to hate I, I that. I love one, dude. No, <laughs> hey, no, no. But Again, people are going to agree with him. Very yeah. personal. A lot of people it's hate very grunge. personal. It's very, it's, it's There's music. only very few bands that were prominent, like Nirvana, Soundgarden. Bridge Against the Machine. Well, that's I wouldn't consider that grunge. No. For real? Yeah, no, no. no? Okay. Stone Temple Pilots. Stone Temple Pilots. Very few that very really, few. you know, stood the test of time. Were they good or no? You didn't like them still? Not even Nirvana? I don't like Nirvana. What? Um, that's, that's Pearl Jam, I might, but... They got some good ones, too. Yeah. It's about the only one. So, like, with you guys, I know, like, I watch videos on... It's hard for us to, to really critique anything about this because we technically aren't from that time. So all we do is we listen to the music and what are you trying we either to like say? it or we don't. What time again, am again I from, the man? A, the age, ageist stuff. I, I so told basically, you, man, I'm the youngest, better looking than right. Godina's brother. Let me I know I might this. not look it. Let me rephrase this. In the ancient times when you listen to that music. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Back when the Egyptians were, you listen, know. Son. <laughs> go listen, the son. Listen, son. Joe, get me a beer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will. I will. <laughs> Let's not get started, Tony. I'll, I'll drink all the whole tote pack with you right now. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, when um, you were listening to metal and all that, were you listening to like Black Sabbath or or were you listening more to like, I don't know, homie out here, do like what, more like 80s, what music, 90s? What or? music did you rock? I like everything that's rock. Since I was little, I liked the Rolling Stones. Okay, I didn't know Rolling what Stones genre it was. I didn't know what it was. I just knew that I loved, I loved the Rolling Stones. Yeah, I still do. Good. I fucking love the Rolling Stones. And um, uh, just rock. I, I love the sound of rock. Black Sabbath, when I first heard Black Sabbath, I'm like, oh, my gosh, these fucking guys are brilliant. Led Zeppelin, yeah, oh, yeah. man, yeah, Immigrant Zeppelin's Song, good. Psh, yeah, fucking classic. Good. I, 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 I love that stuff. We didn't discover Spanish rock until way, way later. And there's, oh, it's good. I like rock music. Uh, and New Wave. 
And uh, I noticed that most of the bands that I like are like British brands. Like, well, New Wave, obviously, it's just it's British, right? Hence New Wave. Um, and uh, But, man, the U.S. has some great rock bands. Uh, heavy metal. I like Pantera. All that stuff. Oh, Pantera's good as hell. ACDC. Oh, man. So how wow. did you <laughs> differentiate, like, grunge? How did you say, like, Oh no! This is one whole category that I just don't associate with this music that I actually like, which is like, you know, like you mentioned, like Black Sabbath, Zeppelin. Those are more the older ones, right? And then you have like the new, the newer ones you mentioned from like the '90s, which was like Pantera, probably like Metallica. You know, how how did you differentiate right away or isolate, you know, grunge from that? Oh, that's easy. So. Grunge sucks. <laughs> so <laughs> suck. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just I, I don't, it's like the Red Hot Chili Peppers are from the time, right? But yeah. it's rock. It's a different kind of rock. It's it's a it's different, funk, different yeah. rhythm. Different rhythm. I'm yeah, not a musician. Kind of funky, huh? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, 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 I it's love funk, funk based. Is that yeah. that California shit, right? That, you know, the <clears throat> funk, right? It's just so inspirational. And uh, I don't. I want to say. Yeah, I mean, it's California. It's only California. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. dude. Actually. Which is cool though. That's awesome. Heavy metal, California, for sure. Yeah, heavy metal was. Yeah, th that's where it came Damn. from. Damn. Yeah, man. You see, I gotta say, man. Like old school California, they they it's made the best. Funk, yeah. They made the best things, or like like skateboarding, right? That's California. Yeah, California. Man. So that's gonna be hard. <laughs> I'm gonna say something right now that the whole world is going to agree, and that's what just everything good is out of California. <laughs> oh, no. well i can imagine the you're that and we talked about that before about california like when you're when you're comparing music like east coast midwest california and i explained to him like you got to think about california it's always sunny the weather's beautiful like th that really affects people's mood and the way that the, the you know like i think like there's obviously you could live a shitty life in california too but at least, I don't know, the environment, I think. It's the quality of life is just so much better, yeah. like you said, when you have sun. And I think you hit the nail in the head. Grunge, out of Seattle. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Very, I mean, like, depressing. Oh, always mood. raining. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, right? It, yeah. It, it, it's, it's, I don't want to get into that rabbit hole there, but it, it is, I, I think that that might be part of the reason. And in California, just people are happier. You have sun. You have great weather the whole time. Uh, they might have something to do with it. Yeah, it is a different beat. Oh yeah. No. So like jazz, is that from New Orleans or? Uh, so jazz, I think it's. I mean, I want to say it's there, there, and the East Coast where it originated, like where. Because they have that very dark, and even in very Chicago, gray, noir, yeah. like. I think jazz was invented in Mexico. No way. Well, like all good things, they come from Mexico. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Hillbilly steps in the door. <laughs> I want to search actually where jazz originated. Search it all, dude. Yeah. Chicago, Chicago is, it was, was uh, I, I don't know where it, was, it originated from, if it was New Orleans or what, but I know that Chicago was definitely what brought it maybe to mainstream. Really? Was that like the whole Capone era, right? During the provision time, probably. Yeah. What's the name of the the dancers they call the belly? No, it's not belly dancers. What's that? The dancers, the chicks that would dance in the little, I guess it's the strip clubs of the sixties. I guess you know they had the the ladies dancing with the lingerie looking uh, outfits. Oh, like burlesque. Yeah. Burlesque. Uh, there you go. Uh, was that was that was that like a a mixture or was that jazz influence or? Or what music would I'm they use? I'm not sure what you're talking about, honestly. Or is that like a whole other... No, there's jazz influence to that, like big band type of music, no? Like the... I know I know what music yeah, you know you're what I'm thinking trying to say, of. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. It's like that noir... But it was originated in New Orleans. Was it was it? New Orleans? Jazz, yeah. Yeah, okay, it sounds about right. Yeah. And I think that Chicago is probably what made it mainstream because it was just so big. And um, like uh, in Brownsville, I suggest... You know, when you when you have, you know make some time and look look up the history in Brownsville and like Louis Armstrong and a lot of those famous jazz players or pioneers in the jazz music, that's where they rose to fame. In oh, Chicago, sure, in Chicago, I yeah. don't know that. That's pretty crazy, dude. Chicago, outside from Mexico, I think is also a very influential city in the world. 
Yeah. You have blues, you have jazz, and just a lot of uh, culture that that this the the city has contributed. What to about house music? Did you, did you ever get to house music or no? Yeah, yeah, not into later though. For I, real? I, I did not get into house music in, into later. I used to hate house music. Really? Oh yeah, like we had a, a legendary party once. Uh, the only party that our parents let us have. Our flyer had said no house music in this house. <laughs> Damn. It was just new wave and rock. Oh, for oh, real? Man. Was it was it was it pretty crowded and everyone was it jamming? It was packed. It, uh, Damn. One time, it, it was so well. Was there a mosh pit in there or what? There was no space for a mosh pit. Hey, but wait, those are the best you had, ones. You, you, <laughs> had three, you had three brothers that they were close in the same age and were really tight. We had a lot of friends. So which brothers are those? It's you, Hugo, so, or and, and, and Phil. Phil, okay. We're at the same age, so actually it was for Phil's uh, birthday, and poor Luis was so pissed off because he was so little that we <laughs> s- we sent him with our parents oh, uh, to Ramon's house, uh, <coughs> so we could have our grown-up party. <laughs> oh damn! <laughs> and that party was so packed, we couldn't fit more people in the house, and we opened up. And one of the time we're waiting for somebody to come, you know, to come in. That somebody, one of our guests. And I went to see where they were, and I saw the line of cars. They, they were dropping off people. Damn. They, there was no parking. That was the only party. That he we, told that time roqueros, of... like freaking oh, yeah. leather jackets oh. and freaking <laughs> uh, uh, metal buckles and shit. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's pretty badass. Yeah, it was, it was a badass party. <laughs> yeah, I wish I would have thrown like a heavy metal party or some shit. But you know what I like, like from when you guys were younger, that I feel like there was a lot of uh, like... I want to say unity and there was more people would get together like just the stories of how like when you guys would get together to on on I don't know if it was Friday nights or when you guys would get together and watch movies and oh stuff like that God. like movie yeah. nights yeah. yeah like that's you guys would I'm, oh hey we're gonna watch this whatever VHS or this is what we're watching tonight and you guys would have friends and just watch a movie yeah yeah it's, at um at, a, at abuelo's house and my dad's house and um <clears throat> So we were close in age, and we're like, as soon as I turned 21, Phil and Hector turned 21 because they, they would use my ID and my driver's oh, license. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we'd always go to clubs, always go to parties. And so we had the all mutual friends, and uh, we all got along. So we would start at the house, they would come to our house, and my mom was, was a great host, great host. So they feel comfortable being at our house. So to us, it was an honor that our friends are comfortable enough to come to our house and watch a movie. And my parents, you know, they're, they're genuine people. You see my dad, you know, he's a genuine guy, but good-hearted person. And then uh, we would watch movies until two sometimes. And uh, if we were bored, let's go for a drive. We'll get in our car and Damn. go driving on the forest preserves. And it was good times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I remember when I used to bring my friend, I had a like, friend or a couple friends that would always come to my house. And my dad would just eventually be like, Hey, uh, Noel, di- diles que traigan los papeles una vez. <laughs> you know, para ponerlos en dependes. Because <laughs> my mom would like, make... Like, sign them up, yeah. yeah. My mom would make food and shit, and there was, like, fucking, you know, pinches quesadillas de uh, frijoles con chorizo and shit, you know. Some good, man, good shit. I remember my dad, one time, he made, uh, he made mollejas. I don't know, you guys, you had that, right, Tony? Yeah, not me. No? <laughs> not yeah, a fan. I don't know what that not was, man. They tricked me. So, <laughs> my dad was like, oh, no, come 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 Dude, my my friend Andy, he had like he helped he bas he was a little fat boy, so he basically ran through the whole um olla and shit. And my dad was cracking up because he's like, damn, dude, he's like this is some spicy ass shit. But my friend, well, he never had a uh, authentic Mexican food at his house, you know, because his mom was already a uh, Chicana, so she didn't really have that that uh. That Let tradition. me guess, she fried the eggs with butter. Yeah, that's right. And she <laughs> fried the beans with butter. Yeah, I know because I had a friend like that too. Probably, no no corn oil. Yeah, yeah no corn <laughs> oil. They used to or, fry or no their manteca. They used to fry their beans with butter. Yeah, One no, dude. Fuck that. Kind of mom. Sorry, dude. Go ahead. No, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> no, well, yeah, my parents never. It was aceite or the you know manteca. You know what I mean? So, no, dude. My my friend had a taste of the real deal. So he ran through that man. He ran through that olla de de este mollejas, and my dad was cracking up. He's like, yeah, these like. It's really spicy, you know? He's like, are you good? He's like, yeah. You know, he kept grabbing more and more. And then I think my dad told him, I, I guess mollejas are like the the lining of the butthole, right? Of the chicken's butthole or something. I think it's a stomach. Really? The chicken's stomach. Well, I, I heard it's, it's like the part. I think it is a stomach. Yeah. All right. Well, we need to fact check that. But It's like the chicken version of menudo. Yeah? Oh, okay. Oh, man. Well, if it's a stomach, it's that's not stomach. too bad. 
I might it's just tell my shit. wife to make it too. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, right. Shit gets produced there, anyways. But uh, yeah, it's the gizzard. It's referred to so it's an organ found in the digestive tract of some animals. So that's where all the doo doo goes through, huh? Yep. Yeah. So my dad told told Andy. He's like, he he started laughing, and Andy was fucking eating and eating and eating. And my dad just a little evil man. He's just laughing. He's all smirking and shit and i'm like and i'm like hey dad i was like why are you laughing dude he's like hey andy you know what that is and andy's like no you know and then he's like oh that's the 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 like where the caca the chicken and andy was like what the fuck he already ate the whole thing dude but my dad like fucking tormented him he let him eat the whole thing he's like yeah that's yeah. that's where the caca the chicken you know <laughs> that shit was funny dude andy was like probably a little traumatizing shit yeah no kidding but it's funny because, you know, like the, the OGs, they be doing shit like that all the time with everything. Like, would my dad riddle you all the time or no? Your dad what? Would, would he riddle you? Would he tell you like, um, would he always tell you like the Mexican riddles? Have you, have you, you no. know what I'm talking about, right? Like there's yeah. Mexican riddles? Yeah, no. No, for real? Well, my dad always does that with me. Oh, yeah? I, I, like I what? Like, he would just, I'll be telling him something. And then like, I remember one day I asked him, I was like, hey, uh, hey pa, I was like, so there's a uh, Jose Phil Jimenez, right? And then he'll be like, no, no me gusta Jose Alfredo Jimenez, me gusta su música. So he'll be like correcting me, you know, in my <laughs> Spanish. And like all the time, but like you kind of like riddle me about it or something, yeah. you know? Like I feel no, like it's that's just something. true. Like you're saying like, oh, do you like this guy? Yeah. yeah. Instead of instead of that, he says, oh, no, I like his music. Yeah, but I'm thinking yeah. like, well, common sense, I'm talking about like his music, right? Because yeah. he's a musician. But he's like, no, I don't like him. I like his music. It's like a, it's like a smart ass response. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Dude. And my dad, all the time, dude. All the time. But I'll say, oh, yeah, I'm doing this and that. He'll, he'll tell me the whole opposite. Just, I don't know. It's like this little competition my dad and I always have. We're just kind of always going at it back and forth, back and forth. But I love my dad. It's, it's fun. It's fun times with my dad. I remember one, the other day we were doing this little thing in his garage. And uh, well, I learned some things at my job, right? I, I have to, right? And I was like, hey, Pa, I was like, you should try doing this, you know? Try doing this method, you know? And my dad's like, nope. He's like, no, it's not going to work. I'm like, Dad, I was like, I'm 100% sure it's going to work because I do it. I work all the time. So just just do it. Try it, you know? Try something new. He's like, no, it's not going to work. No, it's not going to work. Just do it my <laughs> way. And then I'm like, Dad, I'm like, look. Go get that over there real quick. So I, I kind of like, you know, I, I tricked him into getting something. He went to go get it. So, dude, I freaking, I got down. I did that shit real quick. I'm like, I'm going to just do it. So when he comes, like, we're going to just try it. He's going to see that I'm right. I'm like, finally, I'll show my dad something, you know. <laughs> he's always showing me everything. So I showed it to him. And he's like, he just looked at it. He's all like, ya me gastaste la madera. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dad, man. I was like, dude, I was like, just try it, bro. I'm like, just try it. I was like, oh, it's que no va a quedar, no. Mm -mm. I'm like, okay, dad. I was like, can, can we try it? So I just picked up the wood, you know, I, I laid it next to the, the garage. And he tried it, and he's like, okay, ¿quién te enseñó eso? <laughs> I'm like, I told you, dad. I was like, look, here, keep this tool, man. And from now on, you could do stuff like that with this tool. That's what it allow you to do. And yeah, man, it, he never admitted that that it worked or nothing. He just he nodded a little bit, and that and that was enough satisfaction for yeah. me, man. You're like, but yeah, I got you, dad. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah, a little stubborn old fart. You know? Got on. Yeah, man. oh, dude, my dad was like almost mad. He's like, I was like, dad, I'll buy you more wood, dude. But that's not the point. He the just, point is like you knew that this is gonna work, and he. I, and that's not that he doubted, but he's like, no, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, and then every time I want to help my dad, dude, sure, yeah. every time I want to help him, he's like, he's very stubborn about it. Like the other day I went to his house, I was helping him uh, knock down some walls and shit in the apartment. And I told him, I was like, dad, I was like, he was all sick. He couldn't even talk. He had like a lazy eye. He was looking like the butler and shit. And he couldn't talk. <laughs> like, couldn't, like Forrest Whitaker? <laughs> yeah. My dad couldn't talk. He could barely move. I'm like, dad. Chill, chill, man. I got it. Let me let me do this for you. You got your son here. You told you told me to come help, so I'm gonna help. Just let me do what I gotta do, dude. That that man will not listen, man. He's a stubborn old cat, man. <laughs> I was like trying to help him, trying to do the work, you know, try to minimize it for him. Nah, man, he wouldn't let me, man. He's like, no, yeah, I see losses. I see. I'm like, dad, that's how you break your back, man. You're gonna catch a hernia like that, man. And my dad's over there, like going all crazy and shit, trying to show me, like, yeah, I still got it. It's like this competition, man. My dad always tries to show me, like. Like, nah, bro, I'm always going to be the alpha, man. You better chill, you know? 
But I know I, I, it's it's this thing I get this like love or respect for my dad when he does that shit because I know he's still trying. He has that pride as a of a man. You know what I mean? Like he's just trying to show me. But you know, one day I guess eventually. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny. <laughs> I don't know. Working with your dad, man. Did you ever have that with my tío Antonio or no? Like you told him something and he'd be like, nope. No, you're wrong, man. No, not really. This is the old school way. He's No, no, actually, he's pretty open-minded. Oh, for real? Been, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah he's, he's, <laughs> I guess it's just pretty open-minded. Yeah. But if you fuck up, I'm sure he would say oh, something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But like if you, if yeah. you have a way of doing like, oh, want to show him something. For the most part, he 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 always listens. Oh, okay, yeah, oh, good idea. Yeah, so. that's good. What are some <laughs> of the great uh, achievements that my tío Antonio has had? And I'm sure he's had plenty. Like, for example, if I'm not mistaken, did you say he worked in the Sears Tower, right? He did, right? I think he helped yeah. when they were building it, constructing oh, it. Yeah. the Willis Tower. Now it's Willis. But I yeah, can never Sears. call it the Willis Tower. For me, it's the me Sears either. Tower, yeah, right? Sears Tower. Is that right. what it was called from the very get-go, or no, the Sears Tower? Yeah. Really? It was the Sears. Well, yeah, it was by built by the Sears company, oh, the snap. biggest company, not Snap. That it's the Sears Tower. The yeah. Sears Tower, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I just pulled out your dad on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, accomplishment. My dad has accomplished, man. For someone that uh, didn't even finish first grade, he has accomplished a lot, and it's that determination that he has, and I think that he's instilled in all of us and. Luckily, we have those genes. <clears throat> he learned how to write as an adult. He learned, and the reason why he learned how to write uh, is because when he came here to the U.S. for the first time, and my mom was over there, he was, he had somebody else write the letters. And, you know, he probably wanted to write some intimate thoughts or whatever it was to, to my mom, and somebody else was writing and reading it from. So this man <clears throat> learned how to read and write in, in months as an adult so that's commitment so i think that is a big accomplishment oh yeah for someone as an adult to learn how to read it began there it, well actually before that even by the time he got married he was a traveling man uh he explored he traveled the, throughout parts of mexico diff doing different jobs different things uh so and then the other so you know after that um another big thing that my dad accomplished is that he has um he built an aserradero, a wood mill in the ranch with all the permits. Long, long time ago. The only, the first probably business, established business in the ranch that was licensed to operate legally in a ranch. My dad did that. Damn. Yeah. Uh, a, st a, a wood mill. And then uh, he left it to come to the U.S. <laughs> because we were in process of getting our uh, permit residency. And they called us at that time. So, because, you know, one of our uncles had, had put in the application for that, and it was our call. So he left that. Literally, he was just beginning to work. I think he might have made, you know, just a couple of cells uh, uh, before we left the Aserradero there. And then, uh, so we came here. Other things, other ventures that he tried after that. The, his latest one right now is, well, when he came here, he was one of the first, the first flipper, I think, from our region from our ranch definitely from a ranch that he bought a burned out building people used to laugh at him because he bought a burned out building it was inhabitable and which building was that the one on uh this was on uh in little village all oh, little on, village okay. on uh, spalding and uh like 27th street oh, i still wow. drive by there sometimes just to see that building it's like where my mom grew up <laughs> so no. it's still there or? Oh, no, oh, my mom grew up I'm on sorry. Central Park. Yeah, yeah near there. I, yeah. I misunderstood. Yeah. Yes, in, in, in that area. Oh, yeah, of course, it's there. So he bought that building, and uh, he fixed it himself. He bought it cash, rebuilt it uh, you know, with cash, money that he had saved, because he probably didn't have a, a bank account. Uh, flipped it, sold it. He bought a piece of property, what, what he has now in the ranch. And went and then he tried uh, you know, to do work of land over there because he always, those roots, you know, wanting to go back to, uh, to the ranch. He was like, fuck this place, never coming back. And, um, you know, he went over there and he was like, mm, maybe the U.S. is not so bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, he came back and it was like that, back and forth, two, three years in Mexico, two, three years here, back and forth, back and forth, expanding his knowledge. And then... Um, you know, came back, 
very intelligent guy, very mechanically savvy. He did uh, some of the big projects that he's done, you know, here in the U.S. Like, you know, like you guys said, he worked in the Sears Tower. He was, I don't know if he was a drywall hanger or a carpenter or a taper, uh, but he worked in the Sears Tower. He did uh, a job at uh, El Nuevo Leon before, you know, the, El Nuevo the Leon, old one. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you about that. Yeah. Oh, man, that's crazy, man. He did the job there. They, uh, they tried. Was he in a company or like, or did he have his own thing going on? When he they was did an that? independent contractor. Wow. And uh, they had a job that no one can figure out how to do. And that's how to do recess lighting in the ceiling. And uh, the man knew what he wanted. So he's like, you know, Antonio. That's the owner of Nuevo Leon, right? Nuevo Leon, yes. Yeah. Wow. Like, go, go to, I've seen this kind of lining in such mall. And I remember when I was little. So my dad, we, we drove to seem like forever to some mall. And my, I remember sitting with my dad there. He got me a drink. And he looked at the recess lighting, how that was done. And he's like, okay, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. And then we drove back. It took forever <laughs> from wherever this, well, out of, out of Pilsen, 18th Street. Uh, you know, where was the nearest mall? Maybe in Cicero or North Riverside? I don't yeah, know. North Riverside. Yeah. Wherever, wherever that was, wherever this was. I just remember this amazing place full of people. And um, anyway, he, he did that. He did that. He did that job. But, big, you know, for that area, for those times and for him. It's a big deal. You know, someone with no education couldn't read prints, nothing like that. And even in the house on 47th, right? He he did a lot of carpentry. Oh, yeah. That was, yeah. That was after all, he's yeah. done a lot, yeah. A, a lot. I'm saying back, you know, just for someone that didn't know how to read, how he built up his skills and and expanded his wealth of knowledge in carpentry and remodeling in general. If he didn't know how to do the thing, can you? And he didn't have YouTube. He would just figure it out. Damn. Like, he didn't know. Like, Those are the best ways to learn, I think. The best way to learn is YouTube because it's fast. Yeah. <laughs> and cheap. You learn sh you, anything. You don't, like, yeah. They say, I'm a YouTube mechanic. <laughs> yeah. And you, you don't. Me you don't too, dude. Time. That's how, how I learned to do my oil changes and all that. Oh, YouTube, yeah, dude, yeah. Fucking brakes on a specific car or like rotors. Man, you don't it's waste. It's valuable, yeah. You don't waste your stuff. And, um, you know, uh, you don't waste your resources as you're learning, right? Other thing that, that he's did, uh, he did learn doing stairs if you don't know how to reprint you're not good in geometry and do, do the math how do you do that and my dad figured that out no math no need to take measurements pythagorean theorem any of that stuff nothing he just looks at it and he knows the angle like that he could be he was when he worked for Sapella's construction he you know he, he did a lot of stairs fast he was he was the man damn you know? man and then right now as an old older man already you know he still continues to work and continues to grow and continues to learn and sees this opportunity that he sees. Um, he is licensed to export avocados. He did all the work in, in our ranch. His avocados could be exported to any part of the world because he's like, what do I, well, what's going to make me more money? What's going to give more value for my product? Well, you know, you can export because he, he's not afraid of asking questions. You know, he's not one of those like, oh, I'll figure this out by myself. It's like, hey, you know, so who can help me? Well, he goes and asks that person. And how can I do this? How can I do that? So he's like, what? Well, export. Well, I guess we'll export. How do I export? Well, you got to meet this. You got to do that. And he figured it out. You got to go to Ciudad Guzman. You got to go to Colima. You got to do whatever. You got to do this. You got to do that. Always done, you know, legally, the right way. Follow the process and procedures. Implement that. And he can export his avocados. I look forward to one day having them here. I know. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, but it's funny. Anytime my grandparents are here in, uh, in Chicago, they will not eat an avocado here. For real? They fucking, yeah, they avoid it. Well, like, this is some generic shit, This is some bro. bullshit, yeah. Like, Damn. Over there, they get the big aguacates. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, dude. They get those like big ass, uh, like uh, they're almost like green, right? I don't know, but they're, it's just, it's a lot more fruit than than what you get here and it's got yeah. like a more it's got more more taste to it it's, it it's doesn't just quality. taste like, yeah, like water yeah, and it's shit. The best, yeah it's good quality man it's like uh going to get a mcdonald's uh a, a big mac at your restaurant here or going to get a illinois a, bar and grill <laughs> yeah yeah it's, just, it's the quality have you guys yeah. ever been to that one or no which one illinois bar and grill it's on uh 47th and colon Dude, it's not that far from you. You got to check it out. Illinois Bar and Grill? Yeah, it's that place is like pretty much legendary. Dude, the burger is so fucking big. 
It's like this fucking big. It's good. Where is it at? They got pool tables. You On forty seventh and yeah, it's by the Uno School. Oh, I'm think I'm you, thinking Illinois either. Bar and Grill. It's very underrated. Is it across it's from good. that ban- banqueta, the 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 banquet place? Is it across from that? Uh, I'm that not sure. I'm not sure, but I, I all that, all I could tell you is by uh, I think it was I think the place se llamaba el muelle. It was like a seafood place. Oh yeah, it's that along place? that along that block oh, somewhere. Okay. somewhere. It's kind of like low key. It's in a corner and shit. Um, it's really good. Yeah. Illinois Bar and Grill. Like I said, it's not that far from you. Anyways. Yeah, no, it's close. So yeah. you should check it out. You lost me at the burgers this big. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. This big. <laughs> That's the subway. <laughs> no, and speaking of burgers, we have to go to that burger place. There's a place in downtown LaGrange. Um, it's called Max. And the burgers are yeah delicious. I'm a big burger guy. I love bur- like good burgers, man. Shh. Yeah, they that's... mean the world to me, man. <laughs> oh, and speaking of me, and I want to bring that up too. I always love going anytime my, my padrino has a cookout. You like, and obviously my dad makes good meat too. But my padrino likes to like these thicker steaks and the way he cooks it. Like, uh, it's medium rare. Like, it's not a well cooked. Yeah, that's what I. Man, yeah, I like the. So, yeah, you should definitely one day. If my He's got to invite me. Yeah. He's got to invite me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> or I'll call you and be like, hey. It's a cookout. Hey, dude, cookout. I don't need. Come on, honestly, dude. If you tell me, I don't need no invitation. You, you don't think over when, Tony. You don't need no invitation, dude. You don't need no invitation. <laughs> oh yeah, trust and me, I, I know that. I'll show up there, man. I have I'll just apologize. be hiding in the bush. No, and dude. I'm making it sound like we do it off. No, that's not yeah. enough. No, yeah. no. If you guys do, it's yeah. fine. I, I understand. Yeah, I've been detached, you know, with other. You know, I haven't prioritized my time like I should with my family. Um, but th- I'm changing that. I'm working on that, and. Uh, starts today that's why i'm here i mean when was the last time i no, it started in the summer if you think yeah. about it um we started hanging out more and it's always a good time with you guys we were at the park and uh and we had that cookout and yeah dude in we Indiana. were drinking yeah. everyone's having a good time i was dancing with ugo you know shh, shh, you know yeah. it was pretty cool uh, <laughs> we gotta go skating oh yeah, I'm yeah. Down. we got no. a skate park right here yeah, well it's a good one i i i could still do the alley but um i have an electric skateboard yeah. it's a cruiser let's go cruising because I what made me get the electric skateboard is that um, I can no I I I have a hard time stopping. Like if I'm going fast and all of a sudden I gotta stop, I have a hard time oh, stopping. Shit. And with electric skateboard, well, I have the I have the electric um, you know, it has so a it's brake. easy to stop. Well, it has a brake. Oh, nice. Damn, that's brake. pretty cool. It is, and uh, cause I haven't skated, I still skate every now and then, but it's been years that I go every day on the skateboard. So I had a major wipeout. I'm like, yeah, all right. But it's like a longboard, right? It's like a longboard. Yeah, long that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, it's, I think that's perfect. Great, a longboard that's electrically powered. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I don't think, even, man, I don't, that's perfect. I, I, I use it, honestly, I use it mainly for the brake because I love to paddle. I just, yeah, those the longboards. Skate, they, the skate park over here, is there an area where it's just like the... A trail? Yeah. There's a trail right here, like literally, like not not that far. Like so where he can yeah. use well, the... Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I really like doing? I, uh, I skate... Um, I, I drive to like uh, somewhere on the south side and take Lake Shore Drive on my skateboard oh, all the yeah. way to like uh, North down. Street Beach. And then I go there and I go to Jardellis, have myself a shake. Oh, yeah. Damn. Nice chocolate shake. That's the life right time. there. It man. is the life, man. It is. <laughs> and then I skate back along Lake Shore Drive and, you know, just on the path, walking path there. And then I sit down, take a little break sometimes, and then pad all the way to the car make myself a day out of that adventure so we should do that give me a couple of years man as soon as my kids get a little bit older i'm yeah, gonna do that shit kids, every other right. day man oh yeah well yeah no but <laughs> no, we, well hopefully they'll like skating i, I was hoping yeah? that my son would like skating it, skating it, it did not interest him at all my daughter got me all excited she bought a skateboard and i told she bought a scalapeni skateboard it costed uh like three thousand dollars it's like the one in this has. is how the, much the we haven't interacted one. tony i don't even know you had a daughter dude what? Oh, wow. I don't think I know how you da- uh, da- you had a daughter. That's no, how much attention you paid to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, think about it. I don't no, have social right. media. Right. Uh, honestly, I well, think... Well, Comey doesn't do social media, first yeah, of all. Yeah, but know he's on Facebook all the time. He's Facebooking, you know. Yeah, Tony? No, no. no. Uh, Tony. <laughs> no, I, me either. I don't have... I We barely started having social media because, well, you know, like... With the with podcast. The podcast yeah. I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to need like an Instagram or some shit, you know, but it's shared with Hector. I don't, I don't have Facebook or none of that. Um, I like it too. I don't like not. I like not having it. It's pretty cool. I think you you utilize time better. Yeah, it's a time waster. That crap. 
I don't know. It's all relative. People love it. I mean, it's so for some people it works, works. For some people it doesn't. No, but you were saying about the penny board, no? Oh, yeah. yeah so my daughter, you know, she, she got me all excited. What is that? It's a uh, Emilio has. It's a oh the, the little, mini ones. The little mini. Oh blue fuck, skateboard, those are yeah. a pain in the ass. Those are hard to use, man. She got me all excited. I told her, look, don't buy the skateboard. Don't you know? Just try this. Try one of these ones. No, 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 no. And she she was determined that she was gonna love that skateboard. She used it once. Oh yeah. Once, and at least she paid for it with her own money, you know. Right. But but still, you know. But my point is that I was so excited. Oh, we're gonna go. We're gonna be going skating. And no, so none of my kids like it. So hopefully your kids will like it. It's not oh, for everybody. Do, do. Yeah, it's not for everybody. Like it, it's not. I get it. The moment you fall, either you enjoyed it and you're going to continue and risk the the falling or you're just, no, nah, this is it. I'm oh, done. no, dude. When we first started skating again, uh, like last year, two years ago, it was two years ago. We, we were just so busy this year. We didn't really get to skate. But like last year, the year before that, um, we were skating like every weekend. Yeah. Every weekend and every Monday, iba todo dolorido al trabajo. I, like, I'm like, fuck. I'm like, just had a putiza and skateboarding. I'm a putiza at work. So I was like all bruised up and shit. And my, my ass hurt from how many times I landed on my ass. It was fucking crazy, but it's worth it. It's so but much fun. But you still have it in you. are like, fuck, I want to do it again. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I've been wanting us to skate as a matter of fact. But, you yeah. know, just that it's been kind of kind of like raining or jizzling and shit. But the skate park right here, it's uh, like concrete, too. So it's like a legit good skate park. It kind of almost reminds me of Petrovsky. Yeah. But obviously Petrovsky's I think might be a little bit uh wider and longer. I like the I like the layout better at Petrovsky. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, Petrovsky has like more uh variety, I think. This one is more like uh well, no, like vert. I, yeah, and it's it's more narrow. Like Petrovsky is like it's a wider, I guess it's because it's square. Yeah, yeah, it's bigger. It's squared, it's yeah. Bigger. Like, yeah, you, you could, know, maybe you could many do, more and shit like Maybe that. you could incorporate some skating into your podcast. What do you mean, like talking about it, or like post some videos about post it? Post some or? videos about, talk about it. Post, oh, know, we post will. Once videos. we start skating again, I'm gonna yeah. be recording us and yeah, so we'll yeah. add Pro clips action. and maybe make fun of each other. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, we yeah. were thinking about like actually like for the intro, incorporating the skateboard videos that we already have. Yeah. Because we got we got one of Hector busting his shit. We got one of me busting my shit. My brother. Um, we need to get Emilio more in the mix, but we all just kind of skateboard oh, and bullshit, and it's I'm gonna, fun. I'm gonna have, gonna uh, like I'm gonna look for videos of when we used to go snowboarding. Oh the yeah, the major wipeouts you could throw some in there. And you know what? One of your cousins, one of my, I think I told you that uh, one of uh, my cousins, Marina in California, her son was a skater, and he oh, did really? videos. Yeah, they, they are they are in YouTube. So yeah, I'm gonna you for guys real. Up with them, what man. about uh, Felipe? Does he have skateboarding videos too, or no? He might. So you want to mention Felipe? He was the the owner of Mex Skate, right? Badass skateboard company. Oh, we have the skateboard right here. Yeah. I wish I had more. Man, I remember the the Don Ramon skateboard. Man, that was the shit was banging, boy. Yeah. yeah. Man, he and has I some think some ones. some of those the weekend uh, one. Yeah. Some of those design. uh designs were collaborations too with the tattoo two artists. I think right with with uh, Noko. Yeah. Yeah. I, some of them were collaborations. I gotta ask Felipe for the Virgen one because I would probably get the like tattoo. The I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna get a tattoo uh, next month. Like I, I had three ideas that I was considering, but for sure the Virgen one has been one of my ideas. Well, since I seen it, I was like, man, this is a banger. This is a tattoo right here. Yeah. I love. I'm telling. You, I love art. I love tattoos. I would want to learn how to tattoo. Eventually. You should. So is I need like some guinea pigs, Tony. Do tattoo yeah, shops I, I like might, teach I people? Know some people like, yeah. That might let you experiment with. Your yeah. Dad wants a tattoo. <laughs> who, he said who? he wants one. For real? <laughs> hey man, why well, not, man? I, I wanted it. We well talked. I I kind of wanted one, and I think your dad also wanted one. But uh, I don't want it enough to choose to spend my money on that. Yeah. Instead of maybe some fine dining at White Castle or something like yeah. that. Oh yeah. fuck, White Castle! I haven't had that in a long time. <laughs> I rather do Taco Bell or something. <laughs> Yeah, Taco Bell's pretty good. Oh, it is yeah, pretty Taco good. Bell. And it's funny because I used to think like... <laughs> no, I have a story about Taco Bell. What were you going to say? No, no, go ahead. Say yeah, no, we, so my padrino, he used to take us snowboarding um, when we were kids. And on one occasion, we took my dad, um, an, um, uh, a, a good, really good a close family friend, George, who he already passed away. Um, His soul, rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace, George. Rest and in peace, George. he joined us, and I think even my uncle Louis might have gone that time too. Yeah, it was all of us. So yeah, my uncle Louis, my padrino, my dad, George, me and Emilio. 
and we went snowboarding. My dad and, and George were like the beginners, you know, like they never snowboarded before in their life. My dad had ridden the longboard a couple times, but not really that smooth on it, you know, like just basics. So we went and we're snowboarding and my dad that day, that time, I think George, my dad lent him a jacket and George had this super bright orange like Gore-Tex, like a big, like, like oh, Sean yeah, White type, like a poofy <laughs> type of <laughs> coat. So he was like a poofy ball, yeah, orange ball, snowboarding. And you should have seen them there. They were like, shh, yeah, <laughs> out of control. Damn, dude, I kind of scared of snowboarding. Falling on their control. asses. I think one of my one of my cousins went snowboarding with some of his guys, and they actually got really hurt. Like some broke, like one of them broke his ribs and shit like that. So I don't know what the fuck they were doing, but yeah, no, you have to be smart. You have to, have to be with start. You have or to something. start like slow progression you know like first do the like the little magic carpet so like the littlest tiny little baby hill and get your you know get the feel of it oh i think these guys thought they were like sean white or some <laughs> shit they <laughs> fucking went they were probably bone. cocky and they went all, all <laughs> yeah out. yeah do they fucking they said you know what fucking let's do it what's the worst that can happen right but the re- i don't know the man. reason why i had brought up that story of the that we went snowboarding at the end of that trip after eating shit and all that then we finally left and everybody's tired and we stopped for Taco Bell. So we ate Taco Bell and then 20 minutes later into the drive, because it's like a three hour drive from Madison to back to Chicago. 20 minutes in, boom, the farts start coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Oh. And this is in the middle of winter, so there's no like, hey, let's bring the windows down. It's oh, cold. Man. Like, it's hot in the car, Keep and people are just warm. boom, just killing man. it. <laughs> Sonaban las trompetas. <laughs> Dude, I gotta tell you um, a story about your uh, tío Raúl. Okay. And uh, related to to snowboarding, but first I want to tell you that you know if you're a skater, snowboarding is gonna come natural to you. Like as soon as I, I remember the first time that tío Luis, your, uh, my brother Luis and I tried snowboarding. As soon as we put them on, we were, we were going. We were still falling, but it was a lot easier than learning how to ski. Yeah. So one time we go skiing with, uh, you know, my uncle Osvaldo, you know, really good friend of mine, love the guy. And, uh, you know, he, and he is loved by a lot of people. By actually, his compadre is with your, um, with, uh, with uh, your tío Raúl. Oh, okay. So it was Osvaldo, another friend of his from, from uh, Mexico. And um, and Raul, we go we go skiing, and I got my snowboard, and I should get them some pointers. I'm like, they, they want them like, what should we? Do? I'm like, look, I hear that it's easier to ski when you're gonna do the first time than snowboarding. Try that, yeah. and yeah, they tried it. I gave them some pointers, and right away they picked it up. But it was three guys, three single guys, you know, young guys, you know, they're cocky and just you know <laughs> pushing each other. <laughs> yeah. Right, and they kept on pushing each other. And man, right away they went from the magic carpet to the little bunny hill, and then before I knew it, they were going up, you know, still but the bunny hill, but all the way from the top. Oh, and I rem- <laughs> and they ca- and it was fun. And finally, you know, I and but I would go and check on them every now and then. I would ride with them, and one of the times we were going all the way from the top, and we're going, like, oh come on, vamos compadre, vamos, ahí va. <laughs> yeah, Ivan, Ivan. And one time, to tío Raúl, ahí va. Y ahí va, y ahí va, y va, y vamos, compadre, ahí va, compadre, chile, vamos. <laughs> and, then, and then he starts going steeper. Oh, And fuck. he's like, holy fuck, you know, you know, <laughs> I'm going to have to crash because he couldn't, he, relax, he couldn't stop. He's like, I, I'm, he was trying, you could tell he was trying to turn to stop, but it didn't work. <laughs> so he just starts sliding, sliding, sliding because he's like, I'm going to have to fall. And he thought that by, you know, sliding, falling slowly. He wasn't going to tumble. And, man, as soon as he hit the ground, <laughs> pop, 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 pop. Oh. He, he rolled and rolled and rolled. And the first were like, well, is he okay? And then as soon as he got up, oh, man, we just started laughing. Oh, laughing. shit, dude. That's and then, funny. Uh, <laughs> ask him whenever you see him. And then we're going down. We're going, you know, we go down the hill. And then this time it's Osvaldo. And, again, he's going in. You know, we're getting closer to the shack. To where you check in where the skis are parked everything there and he's like trying to, to, to turn and turn and isn't that turning and turning and bam he runs into all of the skis and knocked them all down oh <laughs> damn that is the only time That's something out I of a le- movie right there <laughs> it is it's the only time in my life that i've laughed so hard that i literally peed in my pants to you. oh <laughs> it was it was oh, the, man. 
the funniest thing. No, dude, we dude, gotta go so next year, hopefully. Don't, yeah, it's something to not overthink it. I know you got kind of freaked out because you knew people that got yeah, hurt. Yeah, I and did injured. freak out. I'm not gonna lie. But no, if you're doing it with proper guidance and with smart like, a liaison or yeah, something, yeah, being right? smart about be it. Smart about it. Wear a helmet when you're snowboarding, and boom, you're like you're you you you'll enjoy it. Yeah. You you like to skateboard? You'll enjoy snowboarding. All right, All right we're gonna have to give it a shot. But uh, ne- next winter, yeah. Yeah, are you guys gonna go to uh, to Tulum then or no? Oh, to Tulum, the pyramids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, dude. I couldn't go this March, but the next time it's gonna be August twenty second. Yeah, we you know, I'm hoping that by next month we can book that. Okay. I, I'm proud of my culture. I'm, I'm very proud of. Uh, well, I'm fascinated by the science of it, by and you know and and. I'm, I'm proud of my culture and being able to go and see that that uh, Chichen Itza pyramid, the serpent come to life there. It's it's something that I always wanted to do. So you've so, never been to the pyramids? I've or? been to the pyramid. Yeah, oh, I've been there, been there several times. But are you familiar with the Chichen Itza pyramid? Yeah, it's the one that, uh, that has a snake. Depending on as the sun rises, a snake goes from the top of the pyramid right. to the very bottom. But it only I happens... Love. During the equinoxes. The, the, yeah. That's crazy how they were so savvy with the astronomy and like, yeah. it's crazy. But um, they say that uh, you're an electrical engineer, right? Yeah. So th- there's a conspiracy theory, I guess, that pyramids, you know, worldwide are like uh, big generators. Do you think that's possible or do you see that being like a, like a possibility or is there anything in the foundation or... And the architecture that would lead someone to think that, or why? The, why do you think they say that? It's a known fact that there are generators. Yeah, it's just you know we don't want the word to get out. You know, I could hook you up for free electricity. Oh <laughs> damn! <laughs> Bring along You're the like, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm like, damn, Tony. he's an Illuminati or some shit. <laughs> he knows something I don't know. Yet. Yeah, I know. No, yeah, but they're saying that like, uh, like in in the pyramids in Egypt that there's. They could feel like literally the vibration from the from the electricity, and there's like literally like electrical power there or something. I've heard all kinds of theories. This one, honestly, I have not heard. I have heard no? kinds of theories. Like, yeah, I I have not heard any. I, I definitely have. I haven't heard this theory, so I don't have anything. You know, I guess uh, fact based to even comment on it. So yeah, I don't know anything about that, but. What I will tell you is some of the theories that I've heard is that, oh, that they were made by aliens, that aliens helped them. Helped them. Oh, so I'm yeah, not surprised sure. that you're hearing something like that. But if you think about it, the pyramid is a very basic structure. And uh, if you're going to, if you don't have the knowledge or the skills to build a skyscraper, to build something high, like we do now with steel. And and um, and techniques like welding to build a tall structure. How can you do that? Like, think about it for a moment. If you want to reach the sky, how can you do that? You know. Yeah. I mean. Well, now you would use cranes, right? Right. You, but back then cranes. there was like a. I think they had like pulley systems. So like it's like a crane, but it's more manually driven. And then they use like counterweights and all to that. To use the pulley, you would need the wheel. The wheel wasn't invented back then. Oh, shit, for real? They had another one. For, so for, like, the Egyptians, you don't think they used, like, the pulley then? They didn't use the wheel? I don't I, I don't know, but, like... That's, like, a very... I, I would think that's, like, a very, like, primitive thing, right? It is primitive. Right? It is primitive. Though. So it, you have, like, a wheel and a rope, like, what goes, you know, what goes up one way would go down the other, you know? So it's, like, a like a means of transportation. Yeah, I, I, I think that by then, the wheel was... you do you know you build a ramp and you push something up and you'll you build a platform now now instead of being here you now you're there yeah no now you're here are we recording or? yeah, yeah. oh now keep going man <laughs> <laughs> i want to hear it all right so going back as, as to why um i completely discard the notion that pyramids will build uh by with help of aliens is that um if you're gonna build a high structure and you don't have cranes you don't have uh, metal. You don't have a 
the capability of the knowledge and the tools to weld. Uh, and even if you had the, even if the wheel was around, and you have the and the and they already had the technique developed of using pulleys, you didn't have a rope big enough to rim to be to be, to lift stones that heavy. So what do you do? You know, you're at ground level. How do you get one higher up? Okay, you build a platform. And then you you know, and then okay, you want to go higher. Ball. Now you just may build a ramp. You push a rock or you pull it and you build another platform. And okay, now, but you need a step there to work. And that's how you build higher and higher. You know, you build platforms. So that's why I think that the whole idea of, um, and plus we, we have, uh, there's uh, paintings that they found or drawings they found that showed how they build these pyramids. And uh, in all of those drawings, I've never seen anything, somebody lighting up a light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Now, there is some kind of energy. Is there some kind of energy that gets collected with the shape of the pyramid? Perhaps. And then especially during certain times of the year when you like the equinoxes, and this is just me just, you know, talking and thinking aloud. When there might be more energy and the shape of the pyramid might collect some, uh, some energy. I, I, I have heard that. And I believe that's possible, right? Because you have this big base at the bottom, and as it collects energy, it all of it might build up more at the top. That's possible. But enough electricity, electrical magnetic fields to light up a light bulb, I don't know. No, okay. Yeah, I know. There's something very suspicious when it comes to the pyramids, whether it's like the, the electricity or, you know, rituals. Um, but what I find interesting is that, like, there's got to be some sort of uh, common ground between all, you know, all pyramids worldwide. Because why the pyramid structure, you know what I mean? Why is there pyramids in uh, Chichen Itza and then why is there pyramids in Egypt? And then why is there pyramids, like, in Thailand and shit? Like, why the pyramids, why the pyramid structure? Why does it start from, like, a square to, like, a, you know, the to square point, base yeah. to a point? Now, they're not all exactly like that, though. You know, we no. could be clear about that. But I'm sure to some degree it has the same mathematical uh, equation, right? The square base that will lead to ultimately like a point. Obviously, like an invisible point, you know what I mean? But um, it's weird. Yeah, they're, they're, Why are they all over the place, you know? There are different theories out there. And um, th th as far as, you know, why, why shape like that, I think is for what I said. Because you need to build a platforms to go to get higher. Why they were trying to go higher? Maybe to go to reach the gods. It's you know it's appears to be common that throughout the world everybody thinks that the good gods are in the heavens. Mm. So you think it's all right? Uh, the pyramid is the most safest way to go to where like if they were to just build a like how we do the skyscrapers now. With the technology they had at that time, they were to do that, it just collapsed. Well, they couldn't build it. Okay. I mean, how how are they gonna how are they gonna raise those big stones? Because okay. they just had big stones. You know, how are they gonna hold it so high? They didn't have that technology. Yeah. That's why they what, built a platform. What is the tallest another, pyramid? I think it's in uh, Chichen Itza. I think. No, the tallest one I'm pretty sure is in Egypt. Oh no! You know what, Graham Hancock. He's he with the new pyramid they just discovered like not not so many years ago. Uh, you gotta check out this guy. He's pretty good. He's a he's a journalist, but he does like a like a, he investigates about like um, archaeological sites that have not been discovered. He he, like, he tries to think outside of who's what? this guy? Oh, uh, his name is Graham Hancock. He's a yeah I know. Her. Yeah, he's yeah, a journal. Hancock, he's yeah. a journalist. Yeah, but some of the theories, I think he, I I, I really do appreciate the fact that he is thinking outside the box. And looking at uh, other possibilities, but the, the, his whole theory that um, I'm a fact search, I'm a fact check the the one I'm telling you about that uh, that um, that the that people were in the Americas here before the late ice age. Yeah, I think that's possible. There is no evidence. He has he has not found evidence. He found possibilities that just say. He, people were here longer than we thought and that's great uh but um yeah i i i appreciate his research i just is it possible that people were here before the last i just yeah it, it is possible no do you think you'll ever go to egypt to see that pyramid the pyramid i would love to go to pyramid yeah, yeah i would love to go to uh you're right though it is the 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 
the largest pyramid, well, the tallest pyramid is in uh, the Pyramid of Khufu, situated in Giza. Yeah. But I guess this guy's debate is that, I can't pronounce the name, Glebeki Tepe or some shit like that. Oh, yeah. He's saying that that he's saying that that one's even taller. No, I think he said it's I gotta, older. Older? Oh, okay. Well, I gotta. I think it's older. Yeah, I gotta check more. But one Wait, of the are you challenging me? Let's put a wager on it. What? Uh, but in terms of I'll, I'll pay you in food, man. How about that? In terms <laughs> of <laughs> in terms of precision and stuff like that, which one is the most like mathematically and like engineering wise? What is the like the most precise? constructed I, they, they uh, both, pyramid I, they both have followed the same principle and they are all built on um and the sun on, on the astrology of the sun now but like the pyramids in egypt being that they were older uh and and as the earth has shifted and changed i think the the, the alignment has shifted a little uh just from what i recall as to the uh, i don't remember if they were built on the equinox or based on the um Soul, soul, the soul. constellation, right? The three pyramids. Yeah, right. The three the, stars. Line, but they, I, I, they were they were built something to do with true north or not a corner or something like that. But they're all based built on the same uh, ideology, trying to reach the stars, trying to align the stars, trying to understand the gods from 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 above. Which ones do I find more interesting? I the ones in Mexico like Chichen Itza because that one a um, it was built like a calendar, so they put a lot more effort. Is I, I think it's a little more more sophisticated. It could maybe just be, maybe maybe I'm just saying that because I might be biased because I'm so proud of my culture. But I generally do, me personally, believe that the pyramids of Chichen Itza are more sophisticated than the ones in Egypt. I'm not taking anything away from the ones in Egypt, mm -hmm. but they were built for different purposes. The ones in Egypt were built. It's a, it's a tomb for the pharaohs, while the ones in Mexico were built for the idea of uh, religion and uh, with the purpose of being a calendar. Mm. So That's they follow crazy. the astronomy more? So you see it's more... Uh... I think both cultures follow the astronomy, but I know I, the, 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 uh, the Mayans were just more advanced in astronomy. More civilized too, right? To, in order to create a map, a that. calendar? Civilized is a relative term. Okay. I okay. mean, it, it, Egypt was a very well was a very civilized uh, culture. Uh, it depends who you ask. In, in Mexico, they would tell you that the Mayans were savages because the way that they used to massacre, you know, people to sacrifice them. But at the end of the day, isn't that all just opinion? It is. Yeah. Of course. Like it's relative. Yeah, because like a, a a Spanish person could say that uh, that the Indians or Native Americans were were uh savages. savages yeah but that's just because of the way that they were brought up yeah, differently because at first yeah because at first like the spanish you know or the Ger the german times or the earliest times of those countries they were conquering other countries and killing and even the romans that were super uh the romans were super uh super big super civilized lasted for like a, a millennia right like even they they conquered the shit out of people. They so murdered they're, they're their shit violent, out of people. Yeah. They were violent. And Super violent. If you ask me, they were also violent and, and savages. The way they used to watch people, uh, the gladiators, die for personal pressure. I think that's probably worse than what the Mayas did because the, the uh, and again, is very, is, is, is from my perspective, I find it cruel and savage to take slaves and force them to fight in the you know it's, it's gladiators for the entertainment of the people yeah they were gonna die they were killing for their that's personal sinister enjoyment. man sinister. well it's in mexico the mayans it, well, they sacrificed the people but they were happy to do that like there's you know if, you know have you been to, Ch to chichen itza i wish oh. well we shall I go will. someday yeah we and will you'll see that um the game that they used to play of uh, um basketball the, with the yeah. hip yeah yeah with the hip it's like a basketball you gotta it was like quidditch <laughs> like what it was like quidditch from harry potter <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah yeah there yeah. you go there you go i've been watching harry potter the whole last two three weeks man i love that movie so good <laughs> yeah it's a classic like i was saying before i was rudely interrupted no. oh damn <laughs> damn <man. laughs> i'm sorry <man. laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry. No, no, I'm messing with you, dude. I'm no, messing with right. you. No, no, I'm messing with you. But um, so th these guys, they would play that game, and they knew that whoever would win was going to get sacrificed. They were going to die, and they all want, they couldn't, they all like, oh, won that privilege, that honor to be good enough to be sacrificed to my God. I think wow. that's the big difference. You know, yeah, they, they killed tons of people, just sacrificed tons of people, and it, it was brutal, in my opinion. But they wanted to do it. That's what made them happy. All right, carry on. <laughs> no, no, yeah, that's... I think I think this. Is, it was a good episode, man. Yeah, me too, for yeah. sure. I touched all the topics I love touch, uh, talking about. <laughs> touching. <laughs> <laughs> I love touching. Them. <laughs> no, but uh, me, Padre, no, thank, thank you for... Thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's a pleasure and an honor that uh, you came on the podcast. I remember when I first told you about the podcast, you were like, "What? You have a podcast?" He didn't, he didn't know that I had a that we had a podcast together, and um and you were excited and you were, you were like you were willing to be on right away. Of so course, now that it means a lot. And uh, yeah, no, thank you for um, when we were younger. Yeah, everything that you've done for us and the experiences that you gave us as kids. Um, yeah, I'll always carry those and cherish those memories. So thank you. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good time, man. I like hearing your story. It's a, it's a really inspiring story, right? That's literally a Orgullo Hispano right there. Um, you know, and especially how you live with my dad and all that, like, and you still, you still did what you had to do. So there's no excuse for anybody. So it only motivates me more. <laughs> yeah. There's no reason to fuck off, you know? We all got to make it. You just got to work hard. Then you can. Well, thank you for having me. I'm very, very proud of you guys. Very proud that you're choosing to do this on your Saturday morning instead of sleeping in or being hungover from drinking. Now, this is good. I hope uh, this reaches a good audience and uh, that you do well for that community and help other people, you know, that might hear this and hear stories of like mine and other stories that are better and more impactful than mine yeah keep reaching out and uh like hector it's been a you know pleasure and an honor for me to be here so all the best to you guys awesome thank you thank likewise you. i cherish those memories always do yeah always do and always will yeah all right hell yeah peace out peace